What's going on, everybody? Wait, I look like a goof. Okay, we'll fix the hood. How did that change? <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Whistle Gig Martial Arts Radio. This is Q&A episode number 14. We're doing it live on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter. And if you're watching live, you are a special person. If you're watching later, you are a slightly less but still very special, special person. person. Okay. Of course, it is available in video, in audio. It's all over the place. Thank you for joining us. Andrew, how are you? I'm great. Great? Yeah, I'm doing great. How do you like your new shirt? I love my new shirt. Got it on whistlekick.com. All the best stuff is at whistlekick.com. It's true. I feel like if we don't stop that line right now, we're about to go off and do a ridiculous commercial. <laughs> like, and, not, and one that only the two of us would find fun. The people watching would... would think it's, it's Dennis would find it fun. Dennis finds everything. Yeah. Fun. Dennis is a fun guy. Yeah. Steven, we, we've got a, a lot of fun listeners. You know, to the show. We've got a good group. You're all pretty awesome. I, I might go so far as to say Dennis is a mushroom. He's a fun guy. Okay. I thought you were going the other direction when people say like so and so is a mushroom. I keep them in the dark and Oh, no, that, no, no, that no. One, no he's, like, he's a fun oh, guy. He is a fun guy. I'm going to see him tomorrow. Yeah. Look at that. pretty good. Well, if you are new to these Q&A episodes, they are, as they sound, Q&A. We have some questions. I don't know what they are. Andrew does. I do. And if you want to send Andrew a question for next time, for number 15, <laughs> Andrew at WhistlekickCommercialArtsRadio.com. Or you can find it on social media. Like, however you... Just don't send it through me, because I don't want to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's, that's the whole point, is that I am unstumpable, which is the new word I'm using now. Hashtag unstumpable. Hashtag unstumpable. It's fun to say. Try saying it. And you write in questions. I mean, the whole the point of this is not to stump me, which is why me saying that is, is funny, because it's not that. But, yeah, we have a good time. We talk about some other stuff too. We mix it up a little bit, but yeah, here we are. We're doing it. Yeah, and we've got two people watching live. Yay, two people! Woo! <laughs> I don't know who they are. They haven't said anything, but that, that's better than like the early days of the show when like negative people watched. They, they would even listen. They would tell other people not to listen. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't. Some of the early reviews that we received were like. What is happening with this? <laughs> I've gotten a lot better. Here we are. Uh, this is going to be on the other side of the 700 mark, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So if you're watching this later, you know, not live, you we've had more than 700. Actually, we have, they're not all out, but we've recorded far more than 700 episodes now. Yep. I've gotten better. I mean, yeah. I would agree. I'm kind of okay at doing this thing. I've gotten better. You've gotten and I haven't done better. nearly as many as you. But you also came in with way more than I did. You had much more confidence, more experience in front of people That's, with, yeah, with that okay. sort of thing. Like you're the delta for you is, is smaller, but you're you're right there. The more you do something, the better you get at it. Holy cow, it's like we should tell martial artists that that if they train more they'll get better. I, I have a I have words that I, I've been telling all of my drum students uh my four word mantra for the year, which is drum daily, get better. DDGB. Sure. It's almost. No, no, that's not DNA. DNA is ACHG. Okay. Drum daily, get better. Yeah. Okay. The more you do something, the better you get at it. It's true. It's true. Flat out. Should we start off with a uh, question? Yeah, I have a question. I have a question okay. here. I have answers. Let's see if they match up. <sighs> All right. Purple. That is not the answer. Sure. Yes, that does not work. Well, light purple. Okay. I'm going to ask a question and then I'll give that answer. So this question comes from Chris Rickard. Mm -hmm. And his question is, for a stand-up style striking art, what flooring do you prefer? Purple. Light purple? Purple. It's a, a reference to SNL Jeopardy. <laughs> colors that, the category was colors that end in purple. And what, and you know. I think it was like Norm MacDonald as Tom Selleck ringing. Light purple? 
No, actually, that might have been a Keanu Reeves one. Anyway, anyway, for striking art, what kind of flooring do you prefer? Hardwood. I really why like Cause, hardwood because it's what I grew up with. Now I now I am torn on this subject. Uh, your timing, yeah. Oh, yeah. So for those of you who are new, I get five minutes. I am torn between the traditional elements of training that I really like and the realistic application of my training. I am probably never going to be in a situation where I'm implementing my skills while barefoot on a hardwood floor. That is, if of all the combinations of what's on my feet and where I am, that's probably the least likely. Now I'm barefoot much more than the average person, but I'm still probably never getting into a, a scrap if I'm barefoot. So that's why I like mixing it up. Sure, sure. You know? And the way I mix it up is I train around my house wearing shoes. Like I'll throw kicks wearing whatever. Like yesterday I was wearing some mildly heavy boots. And I'm like, oh, what do my kicks feel like with this? Oh, okay, that's fine. You know, I can still do this. I think that training dynamically in varied environments mm -hmm. is important. Yeah, I think if you've never trained in shoes, you should train in shoes. I think if you've never trained barefoot, you should train barefoot. There are a lot of benefits to training barefoot that, you know, oh, but Jeremy, it hurts my feet and my knees because your feet are weak. There are muscles in your feet that are probably atrophied. I'm probably going to write a book on this at some point because it needs to be discussed. But most people have weak, atrophied feet, and it's why we have joint issues. That's a whole other separate discussion. Uh what, what is the most likely, here's a question, what do you think would be the most likely circumstance for me as a barefoot person to get into some kind of tussle? Where would I be? What would be under my feet? If you were barefoot, I would say probably at home. I'm thinking sand. I'm thinking sand. I'm at, a, at a beach. Okay. Somebody's had a bit too much to drink. Yeah, okay, fair. And, you know, something happens. Like, that's where I'm, I just walk around barefoot all the time at home. So. Yeah, I usually do too. But there's nobody else here. Okay, fair. So it's pretty, so beach, pretty yeah. Beach, right? Um, and so I think considering it in that way is great. Now, if we're looking at this purely from the development of proprioception, body awareness, um, conditioning of the feet, etc., I think barefoot on a hardwood floor is wonderful. Uh, if you're trained to it, if you if you've trained up to it, something a little more abrasive, concrete rough concrete, asphalt, mm. asphalt on a really hot day. Ooh. I, I have had asphalt seared to the bottom of my feet. I didn't know about it until later because calluses. Yep. I think that's the answer. Yeah. That, that, that's a good answer. I mean, I, I would agree. It's, I don't, it's I don't nice. Like it's nice to have mats. It can be. But it unsettles your balance. Yeah, so absolutely. You have less stability on mats than you do on a hard surface. Well, and my suspicion is that that is why old school training was done on hardwood. Now, yeah. I don't know how traditional that is. That is what I was taught as traditional. Yeah. If you're learning how to balance and you're on something that's even mildly squishy, it's making it more challenging. And for those of you who might be questioning what Andrew is doing. Like he's responding to comments and prepping the next question and things like he's, yeah, not, yeah. I'm he's not, not ignoring, ignoring you and like, Oh, let's drop on Amazon right uh, now. I mean, Craig says he's barefoot 90% of the time. Uh, Craig and uh, Dennis are both watching. So Dennis, you just joined. I did call you a mushroom. You're going to have to listen back to find out why I called you a mushroom. He's going to assume it was my, my answer. No. Yeah. He's, he'd be wrong. But that's okay. Um, Good. So that, I mean, that, that that's a good answer. Uh, you know, Chris's question was also specifically about striking arts, right? Yeah. And, you know, it's nice when I go to the dojo, we pull out the mats and we're training on the mats, but we're sometimes doing throws and doing takedowns. And can you do that thing on hardwood? Yes. Should you do that stuff on hardwood? Yeah. Eventually. I, I think you should. As you get better. Yeah. yeah. Because if you're used to it, like anything else, if you only train it in this one circumstance or this one set of conditions yeah and yep. those are not the exclusive conditions under which that might apply then you are doing yourself a disservice yeah, yeah absolutely but it, it makes sense hardwood something hard underneath you yeah you know, gives you a strong solid base to push off from Oh, show yeah yeah um for the us first time i ever said faux show on the show on the show oh, okay 
Uh, you know what gives us a strong, solid base, though, to be able to continue to do our show is Patreon. Such a good translation. Yeah. I love it. Uh, Patreon.com slash Whistlekick. We have... We have six tiers. The lowest tier is two bucks. In two bucks, you get to know what's going on behind the scenes of the show, like who's coming up as guests. We announce, like, sometimes, if you ever watch First Cup, and I say, we have a big guest coming, I'm interviewing them today or tomorrow, and you say, man, Jeremy, I would love to know who these people are. It'll cost you $2 a month. That's it. Now, if you want bonus content, I recorded an audio episode yesterday. It was a little bit of a hybrid between something going on in my life, the way I see the world, and martial arts. You listen to it. Mm -hmm. Is that a fair? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's an audio episode that's never going to hit anywhere else. I listen to it because I'm a Patreon subscriber. Even though you're an employee, you still contribute to Patreon. I do. Because? Uh, I've, I've said it many times before, but for those that haven't heard it, I want to continue to support the things that I love and the things that that – I think bring value to me and this show, even though I'm now sitting here as a co-host of the show, it still brings value to me. It brings value to me too. So I don't get paid. This is my value. Like I, if that's, that's how I'm paid yep. in, in this, at this point, maybe someday I get paid uh, at $10. We throw you some bonus video. Like there's a, it's coming up. It'll be still right about this time that this airs. We recorded an episode that's only getting released as audio, except for on Patreon. Mm -hmm. That's true. That was a good interview. It was a really was good really interview. Fun. And I felt like the video side of it added something. Yeah. It wasn't like dramatically different, but I think if you like watching, which honestly, like even though we have the YouTube stuff, most people still listen, but I thought it was, I thought it was a good way to do it. And of course, you know, at, at 25, we throw you book and programs books and programs and drafts of those things as we release new ones. And at 50 and 100, you're getting in on I mean, there's some other stuff going on there, but you get access to the School Owners Mastermind. Which Craig just mentioned, the amount of value from the extra episodes and especially the Instructor Mastermind are absolutely worth it. Yep. Wow. If you're a school owner, I would challenge you to find me anything that provides a better value, a better ROI, return on investment yep. than that mastermind. Seriously. Yep, I agree. We could probably charge a lot more for it, but we're not going to. So I don't want to. All right. You ready for question number two? Number two. All right. That was not, those were not great punches. Those were okay. Hold on. Number two. Okay. <laughs> now I'm self-conscious about my technique. All right. So this question comes from uh, Matt and Jenny Nather. Hey. Uh, Matt and Jenny. I, I don't know specifically which one posed this question, but we'll just say it was them collectively. If you could only use combinations from one traditional form for self-defense against a variety of grabs and attacks with little to no modification, which form would you choose? That's a tough question. Good job, guys. Can you see me doing them? <laughs> I'm doing no. For those that are just listening, you're missing out on Jeremy miming uh... Uh, forms while sitting down in a chair. Mm. For those of you watching, I hope you're enjoying it. All right, so uh, you know it's funny. I played with this the other day, and I showed you some of it in Nidon. In Nidon, you did, and that might be my answer. I'm also thinking Saison. So my Saison is the uh, Ishiguro Saison. Mm -hmm. And there's some, some good stuff in there that I think is pretty applicable. Again, my big more, uh, more moves. Now, I know if, if I was Matt Brown, I would say Nahanshan because that's... His theory, I, I've heard Matt say this, and, and he, he's right that there was so much in there. But the key here, and Nahanshin is also known as Nafanshi or, or Teki, um, and I can never remember the Taekwondo name. There, there's one that's almost identical, and I okay. keep forgetting it. Um, somebody may chime in on, on it for me. I, I, I learned so many of the Taekwondo forms so 
quickly that I forget the names. Like they, they, they can do the form, but you can't remember the names. Um, but it's that modification piece that's throwing me. Like which one, as I know it, has the most applicability. And, you know, it might, I could still say Nahanshin. Just to be different though, I'm going to say Pinyanidon. Okay. Um, Mark Warner asked only Japanese forms, but no, any form that you know. I don't, I don't know any Chinese forms. I, yeah. I learned like, I learned a Wushu form once a few years ago. Yep. but not well enough that I retained it. Yeah, yeah. For me, my answer would be Naifanshi as well. And it probably stems more from uh, I have trained that one with Sensei Ian Abernathy, yeah. actually, the whole kata from the clinch. Like, the whole thing from close up. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's so useful the, in that. The regard. rotational stuff there, I think, is really where yeah. the value comes in. You get a lot of that that 90 and even 180 degree rotation that all you have to do is stick out an arm and now it's a throw. It's across the back of the neck. It's across yeah. the front. It's this, there's just, bam, bam, right? Like there's just so much in there that I, I think is really valuable. And, and yeah, it, this, is, this is one of those questions where if you know different things than I know, you have different answers. And even if yeah. you know exactly what I know, you probably, you, you very well could have a different, different answer. answer. Absolutely. And this is, this is where... You know, so my original instructors spent a very long time putting together a form that in its most basic format is directly applicable. Like the bunkai is baked in. Oh, yeah. And nice. it's so cool. That's really cool. And so yeah. I would pick that one if that was really if, but I, they, they made it over the last 20 years. I'm not going to call it traditional the way everyone's going to define it. Yeah, that's fair. Um, that's awesome. That's great. Um, you know, other people are chiming in. Uh, you know, Mark said that those are good answers. That's good. Um, he also agrees with Craig on the mastermind. Um, one of the, you know, Patreon is a great way to support us, and, and we love that. All of our Patreon supporters are great. But two thumbs up. Probably the the one of the number one ways you can also support us, which costs nothing, a little bit of time, some time costs nothing, would be to leave a leave us a review, right? Yeah. Um, it really helps our numbers on what other people see and on all the search algorithms and there's, all that stuff. It really, really, really helps. There's so much that this stuff applies to. And, you know, if anybody really wanted to sit down and nerd out, we're not going to do this on the show. But for those of you who don't know, in my consulting work, search engine optimization is one of the things that I do for clients. And the number one thing that I advise most of them, here, here's a great bit of free advice. And maybe in exchange for this free advice, you will leave a review. The number one thing that you can do as a business, any business, to increase your search rank right now is to get people to leave Google reviews, specifically Google reviews. There is nothing that is, is easier. There are plenty of things you can do, but everything else being roughly equal, yeah. there is a dramatic impact from even a single review. And I have clients where I'm like, just... You had four new reviews this month. Look at the numbers next month. You had zero new reviews. Look at the numbers, right? Yeah. Like we can see it so clearly. So the three places we ask for reviews, Google, just go to google.com and search for Whistlekick. Don't put Whistlekick in the search bar because it's probably gonna bring in a whistlekick.com that doesn't help anybody, unless you wanna buy something, that's cool too. But go to google.com, like you've got the real Google screen and you're like, Whistlekick, and still not how I type, but. <laughs> okay, and it'll come up on the right and you can leave a review and hopefully it'll be a nice review but anybody can leave a review yep uh apple Podcasts is a biggie for us and then also facebook those are the three big ones and if you leave reviews on one of those we check them and we randomly select someone from each of the most recent reviews each category to get a gift certificate not just a coupon, but a gift certificate. You as you're as you're pulling it up, yeah. I'll let you know that the uh, so I've got uh, you know on my iPad I'm running the chat yeah right here uh, and the I've got the sound turned off right obviously muted so that it's not picking it up and so the uh, automatically generated 
closed captioning comes up, oh. and all of our talk of Naifanchi and oh, how bad all the that, butcher that. Yeah, that was really fun. So, any any unintended expletives? I, I didn't notice closely enough to see, but it was just interesting. Naifanchi, 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 Teki. <laughs> Oh, it, it got it's it's a little, running a little back. Yeah, but, I want to see it. Uh, oh, there's uh, da, da. here it comes. Here it comes. Oh, okay, uh, okay, not bad. Okay, it got it. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Nice job. All right, so um, we didn't have as many reviews this past month as we typically do. If you have not left a review on all three platforms, please do. Uh, the one other place that that helps us that you can't leave a review, you can leave a rating is Spotify. And we definitely benefited from Spotify opening up ratings. Um, you have to listen to at least 30 seconds of an episode before you can leave a rating. So, uh, so this comes in from Colin JKD, new listener, just started listening, but can already tell that Jeremy is a great host and has engaging and unique guests. Excited for more. Thank you, Colin. I'm assuming your name is Colin, given your, your handle, uh, email me, Jeremy at whistlekick.com. I'll send you that code. And there are people from, from last month that didn't reach out. You should reach out. Although that episode just got released last week. Yeah, I know. But officially. If you're That's listening to this live. in a few weeks and you're like, oh yeah, Jeremy read my name. Email me. Like, come on. Let me let me let me thank you. Yeah. Let me thank you. Please. Let me give you free stuff. Let me give you free stuff. All right. So uh ready for your next question? I'm ready. Uh and just as another reminder, you guys can send in questions to me ahead of time, and I'll put them on my phone, and I'll read them here live. I'm glad you pointed to your phone. Yep. That might have been confusing for the people watching. Yeah, it's true. I'm glad we're at this point in our friendship now. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and if you ever want to come on and ask your question live, like we can we can do that. We have that ability now. Which is You don't cool. have to come to Vermont and drive by road. No, no, please don't. Not today. <laughs> we can, we can, through the beauty of the interwebs, we can connect you. All right. So another second question from Chris Rickard. Okay. And his question is, what household objects are targeted most with your current focus on your hook punch? Mm. For those who don't know, Jeremy has been working on his hook punch. I have been working on my hook punch. So uh, a little bit of background at my superfoot testing in Atlantic City, if there was anything that I did not, the thing that I did most poorly, the thing that I did worst was definitely my hook punch. Uh, my understanding of a hook punch coming out of traditional martial arts is, is a bit different than what the Wallace asks for in a boxing context. Context, And I've been spending a lot of time working on it. So most of my time, has with the hook punch has not been so much on household objects other than the exception of plants. It's only been recently. Mm -hmm. So you can see over there, I got a stand up bag uh, that gets some time with my hook punches. There's a heavy bag at the gym that I go to. I've been working that uh, early on this door frame right here, which was, people can't see, which nobody can see, but you can imagine what a door frame looks like received a lot of slow technique because it allowed me to really dial in where I was standing relative to my striking and keeping things. You know, I, I like thinking about the angles, the physics of yep. what I'm doing. Uh, that's really important to me early on. I was, you know, there was some shoulder discomfort from throwing hook punches on like clearly something's off here and that's really been helpful. But as I've gotten better, you know, Dennis is watching and he's hopefully, okay with with this hook punch um you know, I'm, I'm sitting so my guard isn't quite right but uh as i've gotten better my plants i did there's a big avocado tree right there there are a number of hanging plants and i use those as targets because i can get close to them and watch them move yeah and how they move is interesting and it teaches me a little bit about where the power is going and everything interesting so hitting plants hitting plants wouldn't have thought that that's yeah. good I believe wholeheartedly that all of the things in your house have value in you attacking them. So for example, uh, most of us probably have pictures or magnets or whatever on our fridge. Yep. Pick one out and kick it. Cold. Can you kick accurately? It's harder than it probably sounds. Oh, 
I'm off a little bit. Yeah, because you're not warmed up. That is good information to have, et cetera. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I, I like that. Um, I don't – I've used door frames as well in the house, in my house to do stuff. Um, I like to close cabinet doors with my feet. Yes. Which is a fun one as well. Uh, I'm not working on the hook punch necessarily right now, so I don't have a direct answer, but I, I like the idea of plants. It's also something you can hit and not really damage it. And you it, know, and it, especially if you're if you're working on distance, if your accuracy at distance is not great, plants are pretty forget, forgiving. Yeah. You know, spider plants, like you, you know, you can just bop that thing like you would a speed bag. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I like that. It's a good answer. Um, let's let's talk about family. We're all family. We are. We want you uh, to be part of our family as well, you listeners. All right. So here's the deal. So most of you know this. This is a reminder. For those of you who don't know this, this is new. There is a long list. One might consider it an annoyingly long list of all the things that you could do to help us out. Some of which you derive value in return, others maybe less so. And I was struggling with how to incorporate all of those into the intro and outro of our podcast. And I did some different things over the years. And if you've been listening for a while, you know that, you know, I, some things would get more attention for periods of time then I would shift to others. There were rotations. Sometimes I would just completely forget about a thing newsletter for a while and then start mentioning it again. And then one day I wrote, I think I wrote to you before you we did. did it. And we talked about it in your kitchen. We came up with the name in your kitchen. Yep. And I said, all right, whistlekick.com slash something. something. And it's a page that is not going to be linked because we're going to give them extra stuff. We're going to ask them to, to clear that hurdle of having to type it in. And if they do yeah. that, we're going to give them, you know, like silly pictures of us and behind the scenes. Yep, and, yep. Right now, there's a discount up on a specific new product and other stuff like that. And if we do that, cool. We need a name for it, though. We need a name for it. And we tossed around a lot of ideas. We talked, yeah. And um, the initial one that I came up with was a uh, no-go for, for good reasons. Mm -hmm. And we settled on family. Yeah. Because this organization kind of runs internally like a family and externally like a family. You know, if you've been to free training day, there's definitely a family vibe there. If you have noticed a good number of the people who come on the show end up getting involved, they become part of what we do. They, as we say, they fall in, the gravity is enough, yeah. they fall in orbit. And that's because the mission here is pretty big. So we figure if you are on board, if you like what we do, you probably will find the value in checking out whistlekick.com slash family once a week because we update it at least once a week. And I put the date and the time that I changed it at the top. Andrew sends me pictures once in a while. I put pictures up, sometimes martial arts, sometimes not. And the way I would use this, if I was not the one making it, is I would put something on my calendar or just say like Thursdays, I'm going to check it, you know, and just go, okay, it was com slash family. I'd probably bookmark it. Yep. And there have been some fun things that you've posted. Like we, you posted a while ago and if you didn't see it, sorry, you missed out, but a picture of you as a Halloween costume dressed up as a Ninja Turtle, Raphael. That wasn't Halloween. That was oh. a uh, town parade. Parade. But then right next to it was a picture of me dressed up as Raphael. As Raphael. Uh, I'm, I don't know if I, I was going to say I'm sorry to say, but I was not a kid. I was an adult at the time. I don't think you should apologize at all. Um, but we both dressed as Raphael. And so side-by-side -side comparison of who yeah. did it better. Who Raphael better. Yeah. Um, I'm going to get you some more some more interesting yeah. photos. But so that's how you can check it, check it out. out. Like, look at the date and time. Have you been there since that date and time? Take a quick scan. Most of it doesn't change. Most of what we're putting up there that you're going to find fun is pictures. If you're going to buy something, unless you have like a gift certificate or a specific discount code that I've shared with you, you should check that page first. Yeah. Because here, here's the deal. We figure if you're going to clear that hurdle, you are probably our biggest fans, best customers, part of our family, etc. And so we're going to reward you. We're going to give back the most that we can to you. All right. Are you ready for your final question? 
Okay. Hook punch. <laughs> There's no plan. What do you mean? <laughs> we get that. Here we go. Yeah. So before I read the question, I'm going to read a quote. Okay. Okay. The quote is, if you break down the term martial arts, you'll see that the noun, the core of the phrase, is actually an art. It's not about learning to fight. It's about learning to be better through the expression of action. I said that. The quote is from you. I got it right. I win. <laughs> the question now comes from Gabe. Okay. Gabe, see you. And we did an episode recently on traditional martial artists. And yeah. we had, it kind of relates to that episode. Based on your definition of a martial artist being someone still considered a martial artist, if sorry, based on your definition of a martial artist, is someone still considered a martial artist if bettering themselves is not a reason for participating in the martial art? Yes. Just because it's not a goal doesn't mean that it's not happening. Okay. I may go out to eat with you know we let's say we go to lunch the purpose of me going to lunch with you is not sustenance it is not to survive okay i'm going to lunch with you because i enjoy the time and it's an excuse for us to spend time together gotcha okay if i train i'm probably training for a handful of reasons most of us have multiple reasons our why, right? We talk about the why often. Why comes up on First Cup, it comes up on this show, comes up in, in the books that I write. The why is important. Everybody has a handful of whys, but it, and, and the whys can inform how you train. It can alter the results that you have coming out of it. But if you show up to train and you are invested in that training, let's say exclusively for self-defense, Okay, like that, that's often when, when there's pushback on this other stuff, it's usually from that direction. So let's, yeah. let's make that assumption that someone says my interest in training traditional martial arts is exclusively for self-defense. Whether or not what they are training is the best choice for that is irrelevant. Okay. Let's pretend you live roughly where I live, where you don't have very many options and you end up at a traditional martial arts school. As I train to better myself from a self-defense standpoint, I'm getting stronger, faster, more flexible. Mm -hmm. I am making my body better. Okay. I'm learning things that sharpens my mind. Yep. I'm spending time around other people. I'm probably engaged in some partner work. I have to be considerate of those other people. I have to learn how to exist with them in a, um, under a, a semi-combative tone because otherwise they're not going to want to train with me. If I'm going to get any results out of it, I have to show up frequently. I have to be dedicated. And I cannot imagine that someone is investing that time, developing the, developing the phys physical aspects, gaining the knowledge, and they are not also having a positive impact on the other less tangible elements of their personality. They may not realize it, but I would venture that, you know, we did an episode recently on MMA and traditional martial arts. Can MMA be traditional? Can it espouse those traditional virtues? And we were quite upfront that in many cases, that is going to happen. Sure. That simply by applying yourself to a pursuit you build skill sets and habits and information and other things. Personal development does not necessarily mean that I'm setting out to be a better person. Sure. No small child wakes up at age four and says, no, I'm going to go to school and become a better person. Mm -hmm. But I would say, well, maybe not today, but when we were kids, the majority of people graduating from high school across a broad range of, of measures would be termed to have grown as people versus their younger selves. Yeah, that's fair. There's a maturity that sets in. 
If you are nervous when you start doing a thing and you become less nervous, you've developed. If you are angry as a defense mechanism and you become less angry, you have grown as a person. Yeah, um, that makes sense. I think you're, I mean, you're first, at, I, I think you answered it within the first minute and a half. I probably I did. Like, I wanted, th that was good. It, it felt too succinct. No, no, I, and that that's good. There's nothing wrong with that. That was, that was good. Yeah. I, I think you don't have to have that as a goal. It, it could still be an outcome. I think it's an almost inevitable income outcome. It is all but inevitable that when you train at something or, or work at something that you are going to get better at yourself. You talk to anybody who trains anything. They often will say over time, they learned about themselves. They probably did not set out learning to sail or drive a race car or lift weights or hike. You know, if you listen to accounts of people who hike the Appalachian Trail, they learn a lot about themselves. Yeah, yeah. Yep. For some of them, that's why they do it. Not all of them. Some of them just like a challenge. Mm -hmm. Cool. I think you did. You, you did good. You, <laughs> you did a good hook punch. The issue I had for those of you that, that are interested is I I was struggling keeping my forearm flat. Like the idea of coming through. I was coming. Uh, el elbow was underneath, so it was more like a an uppercut hook hmm. kind of hybrid. Hybrid, hybrid yeah. yeah. Right. And um, it's hard to do it sitting because you know. I should be. I should be doing it over here. You could right? do a Patreon video for people. I um, could. I don't. I don't know if I. Just say. I could. Here's how I'm less terrible at throwing a hook <laughs> on. You. you too can be less terrible if you be like me. <laughs> awesome. What else we got? That's it. Uh, let's open it up real quick. Anybody in the chat? If you've got a quick question, we can do that. Otherwise, we're going to wind down. So you got sixty seconds. Yeah, nobody, nobody's written anything for a while. Okay. That's well, fine. they're probably just hanging out listening or watching while they do other things, which is okay because, you know, it is midday on a Tuesday. That is true. All right. Well, I want to thank everybody for watching, for listening. We really do appreciate all of you. These shows are fun. I have a really good time doing them. And knowing that there are people watching live is kind of cool. If you enjoy this experience, please consider joining us for First Cup. We do First Cup every weekday. 6.30 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time. We run it on Facebook. We run it on YouTube. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we run it on Twitter. Tuesday and Thursday, we run it on Twitch. We got our first Twitch subscriber today. Nice. We have one. Yay! Cool. We've only aired, like, dozens of episodes. Hey, anyway. you got to start somewhere. Uh, we talked about whistlekick.com slash family. I won't mention that again. Yeah. Yeah, we've got books on Amazon. We've got the Patreon. We've got social media at Whistlekick. We've got a newsletter. You can sign up for it at whistlekick.com or whistlekickmarchwatchradio.com. Don't forget the transcripts. Like we transcribe these episodes. If you're, and I think the best use of them, the way I use them, I think the way you use them. What did that person say? That we talked about. Who yeah. was it that we talked about that with? Yeah. And there's a search box at whistlekickmarchwatchradio.com, and it'll tell you. Oh, yeah. We talked about this person with this episode and this episode and this episode. But what did they say? Control F. <laughs> Fine. Yeah. Right on. Awesome. Cool, man. You okay. ready? I think so. Okay. Until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, and have, have a great, great day. day.